click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to see some numericals based on the technique of FDMA and TDMA. The first that we are going to see is a numerical on FDMA. The question is, if the total bandwidth is 12.5 megahertz, the guard bandwidth is 10 kilohertz and the channel bandwidth is 30 kilohertz, find the number of channels available in the FDMA system. As we know in FDMA, every user is divided on frequency. And on those frequency, we keep separate bands called as guard bands in which no data has been transmitted, but they are used just for separation between multiple users. In this question, we have been asked to find the number of channels that this system is going to provide us. So the formula is as follows. The number of channels is given as the total bandwidth subtracted by twice of the guard band upon the individual channel bandwidth. Why we take twice of the guard band? The reason is that every channel has a guard band before it and after it. Hence, we subtract two times. Why we subtract two times the guard band is that every frequency has a guard band before the channel and after the channel. Hence, we subtract twice. In this numerical, we have been provided with all the values. So, let's substitute all the values. Here, what I have done is, I have substituted the values of the bandwidth, the total bandwidth in terms of hertz, also the guard band in terms of hertz and individual channel bandwidth in terms of hertz. This will make the calculation much simpler. So the answer here is 416 channels are available in the entire system for use. Since in the numerator it is hertz and denominator it is also hertz, so eventually they cancel and we get a quantity which does not have any unit. It is just a number and this is the number of channels that the entire system provides us. Let us go to the next numerical on TDMA techniques. The question is as follows. Consider a GSM which is TDMA FDD system. It uses 25 megahertz for forward link which is broken into radio channels of 200 kilohertz. If eight speech channels are supported on a single radio channel and no guard band is assumed, find the number of simultaneous users that can be accommodated in the GSM system. Here, the formula still remains the same, but as we know in TDMA, every frame is divided between multiple users. Say in one TDMA frame, I have eight slots in which the data transmission takes place. Then in every slot is considered as one channel and every slot is given to users. So if I have eight slots, I have eight users that could be accommodated in that channel. Let us see how to solve this. If you see this formula, it reminds us the formula of the FDMA channel system. But here, since we have multiple users on one single frame, hence we multiply with M. M becomes the number of users here in one time frame. So in this numerical, since no guard band was considered, we are keeping the guard band as zero. The final answer is 1000 users can be supported on the system. We will now see the next numerical on TDMA. 
The question is as follows. If the GSM uses a frame structure where each frame consists of 8 time slots and each time slot consists of 156.25 bits, data is transmitted at the rate of 270.833 kbps that is kilobits per second in the channel. The first thing that is asked to find is the time duration of a bit. As we know it is given the kbps that is this many kilobits are transmitted in one second. So what now I have to find out is just I have to inverse it. I have to find how much duration one bit is going to require. Since one second takes 270.833 kilobits per second, now I have to find out in x seconds my one bit is going to get transmitted. It is just a simple cross multiplication. So the answer is that one bit takes 3.692 microseconds. The next question that is asked is what is the time duration of a single slot? Here I have drawn the TDMA frame structure which shows 8 slots. The first slot or all the slots are having 156.25 bits. We have been asked is what is the time duration of one slot? So, the time duration is nothing but the number of bits that we have multiplied by the time taken by a single bit that is 3.692 microseconds. So, the answer here is for one time slot, the time duration is 0 0.577 milliseconds. The third question that has been asked is, what is the time duration of a single frame? Since we know the time duration of one slot, I am easily able to find the time duration of 8 slots by multiplying it by 8. So the answer here is 4.615 milliseconds. The final question is how long a user must wait for the second transmission or what is the time between consecutive transmissions. As we know in a time frame a user is allowed only one time slot to transmit. The next time slot that is he, that he's been allowed to transmit is the next time frame. So the time duration is nothing but the time duration of the entire frame. So the answer for the final question is 4.615 milliseconds. The next numerical on TDMA is as follows. If a normal GSM time slot consists of 6 trailing bits, 8.25 guard bits, 26 training bits and 2 traffic bursts of 58 bits, find the frame efficiency. So first what we'll do is we'll find out how many bits do we have in one time slot. It is already given that in a time slot we have training bits, uh, guard bits and so on. First we'll find out how many bits are there in one time slot. Since we have been given trailing bits, training bits and the traffic we can easily find out the total number of bits in one time slot. Since we have two data bursts, I have multiplied with two. So the answer is 156.25 bits we have in one time slot. Now we'll find out how many bits are available in the entire frame. Since it is given that it is a GSM system, GSM uses TDMA and the TDMA frame has eight users in a single frame. 
So if one time slot has 156.25 bits, then 8 users are going to multiply with 8. So the answer is 1250 bits per frame. Now we have been asked to find the efficiency of the frame. Efficiency actually means the number of actual data that we are transmitting and the number of overhead that we are transmitting. The overhead bits are all those bits except the data bits like training bits, trailing bits and so on. So first we will find out what are the number of overhead bits that we are transmitting. So the total number of overhead bits is 322 bits. Frame efficiency is given as frame efficiency is given as 1 minus the overhead bits upon the total bits. Which is 0 0.7424. The percentage can be calculated by multiplying it with 100. So the efficiency of the frame is 74.24%. That is the amount of actual data that we are transmitting and the other bits are overhead bits. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.